We have breaking news today, royal news that is. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan will no longer use their royal titles and will no longer get public money for royal duties. The Queen released the bombshell statement just moments ago, which says, quote, following many months of conversations and more recent discussions, I'm pleased that together we have found a constructive and supportive way forward for my grandson and his family. Harry, Meghan and Archie will always be much loved members of my family. I recognize the challenges that they have experienced as a result of intense scrutiny over the last two years and support their wish for more independent life. I want to thank them for all their dedicated work across this country, the Commonwealth and beyond. And I'm particularly proud of how Meghan has so quickly become one of the family. It is my family, whole family's hope that today's agreement allows them to start building a happy and peaceful life. And Buckingham Palace also released a statement which includes the fact that Harry and Meghan will repay the money used to renovate Frogmore Cottage. The statement also says, quote, the Sussexes will not use their HRH titles as they're no longer working members of the royal family. All right, we're going to delve into this a little, a little more detail. CTV News royal commentator Richard Berthelsen joins me now. Richard, this just coming on the news wires now. What's your reaction? Well, I mean, this is basically what uh, many of us have been talking about for several days. This is really a full royal resignation from the royal family. They started out with their position last week that they were going to continue to be working members at some extent. This statement makes clear that they will not be. It affects a number of the issues that have been in the public discussion in the last few days. Mm -hmm. It makes clear that the prince will be stepping back from military appointments that uh, money will be repaid for Frogmore, which had been a huge source of issues in the United Kingdom, and that they most definitely would not be receiving any further public funding for their royal, uh, their royal lives. I'm just taking a look at the statement uh, from the Queen. That first line there is one that we're all scratching our heads about, Richard, following many months of conversations and more recent discussions. When all of this came out, it really seemed that this was something Harry and Meghan had been discussing made the announcement, and then there was that emergency meeting that happened. So walk us through that a little bit there. Do you think this was something that they had been discussing with the Queen for quite some time now, but perhaps the announcement was just what the, the you know, the breaking news part about that was, but, in, but this was something that was going to happen in any case? I think that's exactly what the case was. There's no doubt that after the interview they gave in South Africa when they were away in September and October, mm -hmm. This would have prompted some alarm bells at the palace. They may have raised some issues. Obviously, their non-appearance at the Christmas uh, gathering at Sandringham was a very significant tell that there was something up much more than we realized. Mm -hmm. And it is apparent from some of the briefings that have been done off of the record with members of the media, particularly in the United Kingdom, that you know they had sort of been putting forward some ideas. I think the announcement itself, making the announcement unilaterally, as they did on that Wednesday after they were at the High Commission uh, in, in London, I think that was the shocker. Mm -hmm. I think the royal family had hoped to keep these discussions inside the family until this was discussed. But clearly, you know, there's been an awareness within the family of a degree of unhappiness. I think the shock was the making of the announcement unilaterally. Mm -hmm. And now they've had to work out these details. And they had to do so with a lot of public discussion going on in the background. And that's why there's specific reference in this document to uh, discussions that have been in the public realm. Right. What does this mean for Harry and Meghan? Walk us through this, Richard, because they do still maintain their title as Duke and Duchess of Sussex. That's right. Prince Harry is still Prince Harry. She is still the Duchess of Sussex. But it does mean that they're no longer going to be working members of the royal family. That means they won't be undertaking the kinds of engagements, even when they're in the United Kingdom, that they might otherwise be. The Queen has said in this statement that they will be invited to family occasions. So obviously, I would expect funerals, weddings, mm -hmm. maybe trooping the color. That is, in fact, the Queen's official birthday. It's possible they might be there for that. So the public will see them from time to time. But they're obviously going to, going to live a life that's completely uh, on their own terms. Mm -hmm. And that will probably open up the opportunity for them to have, uh, you know, uh, events and maybe endorsements, mm -hmm. maybe some kind of financial uh, compensation for our appearance at events or sponsorships. That is inconsistent with being a Royal Highness and a working member of the family. And right. that's why this statement is structured the way it is. And certainly could, uh, it does open up the possibilities for Meghan to get back into acting if she, she cho so chooses. Uh, would Harry still be able to uh, lead the Invictus Games, that being something that he championed? 
Yes, I think the statement is quite clear, and it says they're going to retain their existing patronage and organizations, so right. I expect Prairie will fully retain Invictus. There are other patronages that they've announced over the years. There's not that many of them, but they would be that be things like that. Santa Bali, which is a, a charity that the prince is involved in in Africa. He had a meeting about that yesterday. The Duchess met with the National Theatre in the United Kingdom. They would retain those. Now, how they're going to do that if they're not fundamentally in the United Kingdom is mm. a very big open question. How this is going to work is a really big open question. And whether or not the palace is going to have a role in terms of approving the mm. Sussex Royal Foundation and the use of well, the word royal. Well, that's royal, what I was going to ask you about the Sussex Royal Trademark. That's right. I mean, the Sussex Royal Trademark is trading on, you know, their royal status. They no longer are going to have that. They're going to no longer be or no longer use the title. They, in fact, still are, but they're not going to use the title. So I think mm. the palace may have something to say about that. And how much they can trade on that is going to be a very, very big issue. I'm reading some reports just as we've been talking or just before we started talking that Prince Charles would continue to support them to some extent, possibly for a transition period. But I think there's a lot of issues around the foundation that will be very closely scrutinized and the palace will have weighed into that to some extent. A lot to still delve into. Richard Berthelsen, great having you on this uh, breaking story. Thanks, Richard. Pleasure.